In this video, we are going to talk about how we can implement a matchmaking system into our game to replace the room browser altogether and which different methods and algorithms we can use to accommodate different game needs. My name is Oliver Eberleit and you are watching the Sky Arena Photo Tutorial. Matchmaking is very useful to get people to a game as quickly as possible. They are not confronted with a huge list of possibilities which, especially if they are new players, they don't know how to pick the best option from. This usually results in players just picking the top options and playing whatever is available there. A huge list of rooms is also very expensive to manage on the client and the server side. So matchmaking is a very useful alternative to it, especially if you want to build a game that scales quickly to any size needed. Let's talk about lobbies first. In Photon, a lobby is a group of rooms that get displayed to a client that is in that lobby. The client can then choose one of the rooms to join, either by asking for user input or choosing automatically. Once you join a room, you are able to get more information about each player in that room. Until now, we just joined the default lobby on Startup which Photon does automatically, unless you specifically tell it not to by setting photonetwork.autojoinlobby to false. When you do this, and you still want to receive a list of rooms the player can join, you need to join a lobby yourself. In our demo, I've done this by calling photonetwork.joinlobby in the unconnected to master callback function Photon calls as soon as a connection with the master server is established. This is helpful if you want to divide the community manually. Maybe your game has different in-game nations that each have their own rooms, or you want to group players who speak the same language. Whatever the reason, if you want to split your community into multiple lobbies, you have to tell Photon not to join the default lobby first. Then you have to create the lobbies manually by creating a new type lobby object. This object expects the name and the lobby type, which are used to match up people with the same lobby parameters. As of the recording of this video, there are two lobby types, default and SQL lobby. Default behaves just like the lobby Photon would usually join automatically and I'm going to explain the SQL lobby a bit later in this video. After you've created the type lobby object, you can pass this into the join lobby method to receive the room list of that lobby. Matchmaking is a way to pass the room list of your lobby into an algorithm and choose which server to join automatically. In this demo, I created three different types of matchmaking to illustrate the differences. Random, an approach based on room properties, and an advanced method using SQL statements. All matchmaking methods are implemented in the matchmaking CS class. And I recommend you browse through the class to see how they are implemented exactly. Random matchmaking is the simplest one, but it's also the one where you have the least amount of control. You simply call photonetwork.joinRandomRoom without passing any parameters and Photon will look for the first available game which you can join in the lobby the player is currently in. If there are no games available, the onPhotonRandomJoinFailed callback function will be called on every class that implemented it. And you can either try again or create a new room so that other players can join when they call join random room. But matchmaking can be much more interesting than that. The second method uses room properties to match certain requirements you have. In our example, I allow the user to choose the game modes and maps they want to play so the algorithm only looks for rooms that match their preferences. Since this method does not allow us to provide multiple options for the same property, we need to search for them separately. I do this by creating a huge list of all the map and game mode combinations that fit the user selection, and then I start to call join random room with the parameters of the first combination in that list. If no room is found with this combination, I go into the next combination and so on and so on. If I don't find any matching servers, I simply create a new room with all the map and game mode combinations in the map queue. To search for a room using the given requirements, we first have to create a hash table that contains all the search parameters the room should match before we want to join it. This is using the same custom hash table we used to set the custom properties in our earlier video. In our case, we put a map and game mode pair into the hash table and finally we pass it into the join random room method. Photon now searches for a room that has these two parameters set in their custom properties. It's important to note that the room properties you are searching for have to be exposed to the lobby. In our earlier video we told Photon to expose room property.map and room property.mode which is why we can use them here in our matching algorithm. The last way to do matchmaking provides us with way more options to use complex rules for a search by using SQL statements. SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it is often used to quickly search databases. To be able to use SQL statements in our search, we first have to prepare our lobby. Remember the lobby type parameter we talked about at the beginning? This is where the SQL lobby type comes into play. If you create a type lobby object with the SQL lobby parameter, Photon will create an internal SQL-like table which allows you to use regular SQL search operators like AND, OR, LESS and BIGGER. 
Each room also has 10 filtering properties you can set and use in your filtering map. The names are currently fixed to C0, C1, C2 and so on up to C9 and can be set just like normal room properties. Remember to also expose these properties to the lobby, otherwise searching won't work on them. Once we have the room set up in an SQL lobby and assigned some of the C0 to C9 parameters with values we want to search, we can create a regular SQL where statement, which we then pass into the join random room function. In our case, we want to look for a couple of different things. First, we want to include all possible maps and gamers in the search and connect them with an OR statement. This means that if a server has any of these set as the currently played map, the server passes through our matchmaking filter. I have also included an arbitrary player skill value that I'm using to construct the filter. This is simply for demonstration purposes, but you can use this to match players of equal skill level to each other. This way, advanced players and beginners get separated into different groups and each have a good time playing your game. The create SQL search string method I made to assemble our where statement looks a bit complicated. But eventually, a query like this is created by this and passed into the join function. First, I am looking for the possible maps that I want to play. Then I include the possible game modes I've chosen. And finally, I am limiting the skill level of the server to be close to mine. I've also added a skill deviation variable that gets larger the longer we are looking for a match, making it easier to find a suitable room. SQL statements make it very easy to loosen the filter rules over time so that a fitting room is found eventually. If we haven't found a room after several attempts, we will simply create a new one again and hope that other players will join quickly. This is the end of our matchmaking video. You see that there are many different options to implement a matchmaking system and you have to decide for yourself which one fits best for your game. You can even include multiple algorithms into your game and choose the fitting one based on the number of players that are currently connected to the server. Photon offers you a few variables so you are able to determine how active your server is at the moment. There is photonetwork.count of players, photonetwork.count of players in rooms, photonetwork count of players on master, and photonetwork count of rooms. This way you can use a very loose matchmaking algorithm if there are just a few people playing in order to ensure that these people find each other. But if there are many players and rooms available, you can use a more complicated matchmaking filter so players will find a match they really want. In the next video we are going to talk about another big component of multiplayer games, a chat.